Welcome to this presentation about gastric bypass surgery. Ruin Y gastric bypass is the most commonly performed weight loss surgery procedure in the U.S. today. It gives patients the opportunity to lose a significant amount of weight to improve overall health when it is accompanied by positive lifestyle changes in eating and behavior. By the end of this short presentation, you will have learned about the gastric bypass procedure, the indications for surgery and who qualifies, its potential risks and complications, an understanding of what results to expect, and how to maintain weight loss. A well-informed patient has the best tools for success. Patient selection for weight loss surgery is based upon several criteria established by nationally recognized health organizations. In general, it is intended for people who are at least 100 pounds overweight or who have a body mass index of 40 or greater. Body mass index, or BMI, is a commonly used formula to determine the ratio of weight to height. In some instances, a patient with a BMI of 35 may be considered a candidate if one or more obesity-related diseases are present. Obesity of this magnitude is often accompanied by diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart and lung diseases. Appropriateness for surgery also depends upon the approval of the primary care physician and the results of a psychological evaluation. Patients must be free from serious psychiatric illness and drug abuse, but also demonstrate understanding and readiness for the lifestyle changes which must be made after gastric bypass with the motivation to commit to them. Furthermore, surgery should only be an option after all other attempts to achieve weight loss have failed. Patients must demonstrate that dieting, nutrition counseling, drug therapy, exercise programs, and other methods have proven ineffective. Since there are several variations to weight loss surgery procedures, they are usually classified by procedure type, restrictive procedures, malabsorptive procedures, or a combination of these two. Restrictive procedures like gastric banding surgically limit the amount of food the stomach can hold. Weight is lost because patients feel fuller faster. Malabsorptive procedures prevent the body from using the calories and nutrients that are ingested. Food is surgically rerouted from the stomach to the small intestine so that much of it becomes waste. The gastric bypass procedure combines both restrictive and malabsorptive elements. As shown in this diagram, the stomach is permanently divided so that only a small pouch actually receives food from the esophagus after it is swallowed. The pouch is about the size of a golf ball. The small intestine is also cut. One end is connected to the pouch and the other end is reconnected further down the small intestine. This is where bile from the liver, digestive juices and enzymes are brought to assist with digestion of food. The procedure can be done using the open approach in which the operation is performed through one large incision in the abdomen or laparoscopically in which small instruments and a video camera are used to operate through several small incisions. The success of weight loss and the risks are the same for these two variations, but patients who undergo the laparoscopic technique usually have a shorter hospital stay and return to work and activities faster. Time off from work varies with different job duties, but in general you may return to work and light activities as soon as you are cleared by your surgeon. Some patients go back to work after a week or so. Others who perform heavy lifting or strenuous exercise may need longer to recover. Most over-the-counter and prescription medications are okay to take, but ibuprofen drugs like Advil should not be taken because these could cause an ulcer in the stomach pouch. After gastric bypass, weight is lost because the body cannot absorb all of the nutrients and calories from food eaten. And because gastric bypass is associated with changes in stomach hormones, appetite becomes temporarily suppressed. Since most of the digestion that occurs normally in the stomach is bypassed, food must be eaten in small bites and chewed thoroughly. Calcium, iron, and vitamins B12 and folate are not absorbed well, so to prevent vitamin and mineral deficiencies, nutrient supplements, including appropriate vitamins, should be taken daily for the rest of a patient's life. When you meet with your surgeon, you will be examined and asked about your eating and exercise habits and your health history. You will also discuss the reasons why you wish to have gastric bypass surgery and whether or not you feel you are ready to commit to the lifestyle changes. Most surgeons require their patients to stop smoking before they agree to perform surgery. If you are a candidate, you will have to undergo various routine tests. 
Depending on your health and personal situation, other precautions may be taken as well to give you the best care before surgery and after. Before you proceed, you will be asked to sign a consent for surgery stating that you understand the nature of the procedure, its implications on your life, and the risks involved. As with any procedure, there are risks to consider. Some complications can even be fatal or require additional surgery to correct. The overall national mortality rate is about 1 to 2 percent. Although established surgical programs usually have better success, it is important for you to be aware of the most serious complications associated with gastric bypass. These are leak. This occurs when digestive fluid is not contained within the bypass stomach or intestines. Pulmonary embolus occurs when a blood clot breaks loose and travels to the lungs. Small bowel obstruction occurs when digested food is blocked from passing through. Wound infection, injury to the spleen or other digestive organs. A hernia can occur at any time if the wound does not heal well. Stricture esophagitis occurs when the opening to the gastric pouch becomes irritated or narrowed. This is easily corrected with use of an instrument called an endoscope. A surgeon uses it to look down the esophagus and stretch the stricture. Gallstones. Excess skin. Some patients require abdominoplasty or a tummy tuck to remove excess skin from the abdomen. Occasionally, patients seek other forms of cosmetic surgery to tighten loose, sagging skin from the upper arms, legs, and chest. There is significant weight loss after gastric bypass surgery. Most patients achieve and maintain a 60 to 65 percent loss of excess body weight over time. You can also expect an improvement in obesity-related diseases and conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, and stress incontinence. Diseases of the musculoskeletal system like arthritis or fibromyalgia may not totally be reversed. However, there may be symptomatic improvement with weight loss. Finally, most patients experience a significant improvement in the quality of their life with increased participation in family and social activities, advancement at work, and enhanced self-confidence that occurs with successful weight loss. It seems to happen in three phases. During the first month or two after surgery, weight is lost very rapidly and patients can appreciate a significant improvement in health. This is important because once patients lose about 20% of their excess body weight, prescription drug doses should be adjusted. Long-acting medications may need to be replaced with short-acting ones. Be sure to keep your primary care physician informed so that your medications are monitored. The second phase of weight loss occurs until about the 11th or 12th month after surgery. Weight loss is slower but relatively steady. During this time, it is important that females practice birth control because pregnancy during this phase may cause miscarriage. However, during the third and final phase, when weight has stabilized, pregnancy should be safe and may in fact be easier. The third phase of weight loss tends to last indefinitely. During this time, appetite may return, so for long-lasting success, patients should continue to eat frequent small meals high in protein and complex carbohydrates, even if they aren't hungry. In general, a total of four to six small meals and snacks each day is recommended. It is best to eat healthy foods frequently and in small amounts, and chew food thoroughly. Protein-rich foods like lean chicken, fish, and turkey, as well as complex carbohydrates like potatoes and whole wheat grains will make you feel good and are usually well tolerated. Try to avoid fried foods and sugary foods like fruit punches, candy, and commercial snacks, which can trigger the dumping syndrome, characterized by sweating, shakes, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. Hydration is also important. Drink plenty of non-carbonated, zero-calorie or low-calorie beverages like water or crystal light. Try to avoid caffeinated drinks and restrict alcohol intake. Rapid weight loss is associated with the loss of fat and muscle, but regular exercise will help to preserve and build lean muscle tissue, while also improving your flexibility, balance, and core strength. Once you are cleared to exercise, it is good to establish a regular fitness routine. This will help you break weight loss plateaus, adjust to changes in your body weight distributions, and burn calories. Remember, once weight stabilizes and appetite returns, good fundamentals and daily patterns of exercise will help you maintain your weight loss and deal with life stresses. 
In conclusion, gastric bypass is a very safe and successful procedure. Make an informed decision to proceed after your own research and communication with your surgeon. Become fully aware of the risks and have a reasonable expectation about the results. The steps to gastric bypass begin with careful patient selection. If you meet the criteria for weight loss surgery which have been described and you feel you can make the lifestyle commitment necessary for a successful outcome, discuss your desire for surgery with your family doctor. Thank you for watching. If you would like to review any or all of the information in this presentation, you may do so at any time by clicking on the table of contents to the left of your screen.